everyone, and welcome back to the FCF Leadership Podcast. My name is Whitney Baldwin, and you are joining me for our special, very last episode of Ministry and Money. And joining me today is the CEO of Terry Savelle Foy Ministries. His name is Isaiah Shook. Terry Savelle Foy is known as the cheerleader of dreams. And as her CEO, Isaiah is front and center with implementing vision in every aspect of the ministry. Enjoy. Thanks so much for joining me, Isaiah. I really appreciate your time. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for asking me. Love FCF, the FCF family, and what you're doing to build up leaders and ministers all over the world. Oh, the same could be said for Terry Savelle Foy Ministries. I have to tell you. We just, as a staff, went through Dream It, Pin It, Live It over the summer, and we it changed us, okay? I'm in the process of selling my house. Another person is building her house. Like, we wow. are on it. So vision is, like, <laughs> top priority for us right now. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. So please introduce yourself to those watching and listening. Sure. My name is Isaiah Shook, and I am CEO of Terry Savoy. Terry Savelle Foy Ministries, and um, been helping help Terry launch the ministry in 2008, when we were still a department and division of her dad's ministry, um, Jerry Savelle Ministries. And then we, seven years ago, basically this month, uh, we moved out about an hour and a half to Rockwall, Texas, reincorporated as our own 501c3 organization. And now we have a team of about 20 here at the offices helping us and um, doing what we can to fulfill the vision. It's growing every year. I'm so excited for you guys. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a wild, interesting adventure. That's for sure. (laughs) As most ministries are. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. There's some understanding there. So Terry is known as the cheerleader of dreams, which is my favorite thing because I too was a cheerleader. So she gets, I was not. (laughs) but vision is such a big platform for her. Uh, She talks about vision all the time and you as CEO help implement that in your office, especially. Uh, I would love to hear your heart on why having even a financial vision is important, not only to us individually, but also to ministries. Yeah. And I guess let me mention some of this as we're going down the, the finance talk to just kind of stirred up in me is because we are going to be talking a bunch about finances and vision and money and numbers and stuff like that. And that's important. We have to uh, succeed in that area. But to understand that I'm talking this way, not at the exclusion of the heart and the motive behind what we do. Mm. Um, in reaching people, ministering to people. It's not about getting more zeros in the bank account. Um, that's right. It, it, the, that's all, in some ways, it's a byproduct of what we're doing. But I'm very much business-minded, though, and having that focus and that financial vision, um, it, it, it's vital. And one thing Terry says is, without a vision, you'll always return to the past. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have a vision of where you're going, you're going to either just remain where you are, or you're just going to go back to what you're used to doing, what's normal. Um, And so one of the stories Terry tells is there was a tribe somewhere in Africa, and the worst insult that they could scream at the enemy tribe was, may you remain in one place forever. Wow. And I mean, that's just the worst thing. And so you think of your life, I mean, we all have something we want to grow into and expand into. And so that's what vision does. Vision provides that framework in order to move from where we are to where we believe either God's told us to be, what he stirred in our heart to do, and it takes money. And so having that vision in the area of finances really is important. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't go across the world and bless and minister to someone unless God translates you, (laughs) it it takes finances to do that. And so to get the gospel out, it takes finances. So we need a vision in that area. Um, And that's what I love about FCF is because you guys understand that God 
created us with us as a spirit. We have a soul. We live in a body. And God wants us to succeed in all those areas, not just spiritually, but physically, mentally as well. And a lot of times as leaders, ministry, ministers, pastors, we emphasize so much on the spiritual side that we neglect some of the natural side that God That's wants right. us to operate in as well. Um, we would never just pray and ask God, Lord, just give me the ability to perform brain surgery. I'm just trusting you. We would do that as we're studying, as we're learning, as we're getting information. And so I think a lot of that applies in the financial area too. We want to do what's right. It just best practices while we're also relying on the anointing to come along uh, in that area too. But the importance of a financial vision, it really does become that roadmap and that GPS where you are wanting to go. And I love what um, Andy Stanley says about vision. And, it, and you can have a vision for all different areas of life and ministry and departments and outreach. But just, and so I think personal health, you have a vision for all that. And I think the steps a lot of times really do, um, they, they cross over. But in the financial area, Andy Stanley is talking about vision that it's not just something that a mental picture of what could be, it's a passionate backing of that, of what should be. Mm. And that's the difference between just having a desire or I'd like to see something different. That's a very base way to communicate vision of mm -hmm. I just like something different. It, it really, it's that conviction and that passion of, no, this, this needs to be, this must be, this has to be, this should be. Um, and I think without that, you don't have the, uh, just that, that fortitude to make it from where you are to see that become a reality. Um, Michael Hyatt, he mentioned something about vision. He has a book, uh, Vision Driven Leader. Yeah, we and, love Michael Hyatt. Yeah, he's just such a methodical way he explains and breaks things down in a simple way. But he said concerning vision, uh, that vision is an act of seeing what the future could be and then articulating that potential in a way your team can follow into the yeah. future. Because without the leader having a clear financial vision, the people that work with and for you, one, either they're just going to be kind of coasting or treading water, not knowing what to do if that vision isn't clear. Or worse, potentially, they have their own vision. Mm. And you, you just don't know what that could lead to. And silos. what I've discovered. It ends up yes. being silos within the organization and ministry, which can cause rather, more division. Yes, rather than a cohesive, we're working as a team going in one direction. And what, because if you can't communicate that in a passionate, articulate way for your team to get behind, um, yeah, they'll just operate with what's normal for them. And I've seen time and time again, again, people might have some, you know, oh, we found Sister Susie and she can do bookkeeping or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, Sister Susie is just failing financially and is she's renting her TV from one of those stores down the road. They already came and got the couch and she's the one making the decisions on a day-to-day -day basis of, how to manage the finances. May not and be so, the best. Perhaps not. Um, but even if it is someone that is very capable, um, you just want that vision to be aligned. And so that's one of the important things too about having vision, not just where you're going, but so that your team can get behind it and as a, as a group work towards accomplishing it as well. So my question, I've, I've heard conflicting things from different ministries. And I would love to know your brain on this. Sure. Um, there is an overarching vision for the whole ministry, but then every department has a, its own vision that supports the main vision. 
Mm-hmm. Do you guys do that? Do you believe in that? Or is that just like overkill? Yeah, we have developed some things like that. We haven't gone so far as to have, okay, this department has their own written out vision or mission statement. The way we do it more is that the goals that they set support Mm. the overall vision. Mm -hmm. And so uh, departments will have their own subset of goals they're focused on, um, generally on an annual basis that are supporting the overall vision and goals of the ministry for the year. Mm -hmm. So I, I can break that down further. So I'll just give you some examples of how we do that. Sure. Um, let's say we have a financial vision for 2022, uh, TSFM, uh, operating at $25 million. So we're going to break that down, um, into different areas. You know, we're going to have our specific goals, which I think every financial vision should contain some, um, particulars being like revenue goals. Clearly that's the fun one that we want (laughs) to dream and, uh, believe for, uh, for us, we have a giving goal where we're no less than 10% that comes in. We are going to send out and, um, so into other ministries and outreach, we will have a savings goal. And for us, you know, that's again, we, our goal is 10%, uh, to save as well for future things that God tells us to do. So we're ready when he, um, gives us those mandates. Love it. Uh, a, f- a funding goal for various projects, outreach mandates. You know, for us, it could be, okay, we're going to set aside a $25 million in 2022, uh, 2 million of that just for the specific grants or outreaches to women's health centers or safe homes. Um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of break that down. But um, I was going to say that, yeah, one of the things we'd have is a, a cap also on our expenses for mm. certain areas. So we would put a percentage of, okay, uh, compensation, total compensation expenses won't cross 30%. Um, and I think that is important for churches and ministries. It, it, this is all outside of, uh, you know, the, the conference table lighting on fire and a voice speaking to us saying, do X or Y. Um, but outside of you know, these just clear mandates from God, these percentages, I think, are, are um, helpful because they give us that margin to operate. And so we would put a cap at compensation for the team at a certain percentage. It could be between 30 and 40 percent. But I think every ministry needs to consider some of those things. Otherwise, you can get so overloaded in some of those sides, be it building and upkeep and debt repayments and stuff like that. So, um, but I just want to break this down a little bit as far as when we do our annual plan for the financial vision of the ministry, which we will do um, first part of November this year. Mm -hmm. And again, let's just say it's that we will come up with a three kind of a small, medium and large plan. So you come up with three separate plans. We do. Wow. If we're this size now with this many partners, and again, these are just numbers kind of going back to what I was saying at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Uh, This isn't like saying this is how we manipulate people. And okay, if we have a hundred people now and it's this, then if we get 200, but it gives you some framework to know, Mm -hmm. generally speaking, um, if we're going to be, that, that size of revenue for our vision, we need this many people connected to us. So right. we break it down to you know, partners, donors, our email list, our mailing list, our event attendance, you know, um, phone calls, prayer requests. We just break it down into all those different aspects that these numbers would have to be about this level to support the overall financial vision at that level. And then that enables each department to set their goals of how their part of the ministry supports that overall financial vision. Mm -hmm. Uh, If that kind of is how we structure things here, more so than giving them specific vision statements. 
What's interesting to me is a few things. First of all, um, what you just described is so similar to how Dave Ramsey suggests you do personal finance, you know, breaking out tithe 10%, savings 10%, and then go into each category and give them a percentage of how much should go into each category. Uh, it makes it so practical. What I also love about this is that you are giving so much room for the Holy Spirit to move in these meetings. You know, like you come up with three different projections of what could happen. And you're just like, okay, well, here's what we're projecting. God, take us where you need to go. And we'll do it. Yeah. You know, it's all open hand. Take me, guide us. We're going wherever you say. I love that. And I know your heart and I know Terry's heart is just reaching people. And I love that so much. So I know we're talking so much specifics, but the yeah. heart and the vision behind what is going on here is so like tangible. I think what's interesting that I've discovered is that idea that it's easier to steer a moving car mm -hmm. than it is one that's just sitting there. And so, yeah, even when in the natural, we put these pieces in place, um, we're not saying, God, this is what you have to do. And this is, you, you know, it's, but doing this in the natural seems to be God saying, okay, you've got things in order. And so I can bring that increase. I can bring we've that overflow. This, yeah. We've heard it over and over again in the Bible, you know, write the vision, make it clear. Uh, faith without works is dead. Uh, let's see. Oh, I mean, there's so many where he just specifically yeah. says over and over again, have a vision, be organized, be steadfast, you know, and work yeah. in order. And for whatever reason, sorry, this may sound like a tangent. I apologize if it does for whatever reason, specifically us in the more word of faith, uh, genre of Christianity, yeah. Uh, we believe that if there is order, or at least I have perceived it this way, if there is order, you are not allowing room for the Holy Spirit to move, where I believe, in fact, it is the exact opposite. If there is more order, the Holy Spirit can move more directly and give you quick, clear decisions of what needs to happen and the direction that it needs to go. Yeah, I definitely agree with that in the sense when I think of the miracle Jesus did with feeding the 5,000. Mm -hmm. one of the instructions he gave them was to sit down in groups. Yes. Before the miracle took place, he essentially said, everybody get organized and orderly. And then the abundance and the overflow took place. It wasn't with people scattered doing their own thing. No, get things in order in the natural. And then this miracle took place. And the same way when he raised Lazarus from the dead, he said, roll the stone away do what you can in the natural to be prepared. Mm. Right? The same power that can raise someone from the dead can move a stone away. Come on. And so there <laughs> is that side that God wants us to do things in the natural so that we are prepared. Otherwise, I firmly believe some of the things that we're praying for that we're not prepared for, it would actually cause a lot of harm and destruction if God were to answer that prayer if we weren't prepared. That's right. Um, I, I meant to say that with your preparation for setting money aside to be prepared for whatever God is calling you guys into next. Sometimes you have no idea what that could be or how much money it would be, but you are prepared yeah. to financially fulfill that vision of what God is telling you guys to do. Yeah, I heard Andrew Walmack say a couple of years ago, um, we were able in a, a small setting just to ask him some questions. <clears throat> so I was asking him just some of kind of business type questions. And he said that you cannot run the ministry on the anointing alone. Yeah. You have to have business practices. That's right. And, and just hearing him say that from someone that <laughs> talk about flows with the, the, the Holy spirit and hears God's voice in a clear way to understand. And he says I'm, that he's not a good businessman but he trusts and has the team around him that are those good business-minded people uh, to manage that aspect of the ministry. Uh, you know, often I have found, and it could just be my experience, that the organization, the church or the ministry in their financial area, 
most often mirrors the financial condition of the leader. Wow. Um, and it's that idea that you can teach what you know, but you reproduce what you are <laughs> kind of. Wow. And so yeah. there's some that, the, you know, the leader's very methodical and disciplined and saves and invests. And they have that margin that they operate. And you kind of see that their ministry or church operates similarly. And, you know, there's others that, no, they need that next check to cover the payments coming up because they've overextended on their house and, you know, they got the, the new Beamer and all that. Um, and then the church, similarly, it looks pretty good on the outside and fancy, but man, if you dig down finances, they're like, no, uh, no, we do need to have Wednesday at church because we need the offering. You know, right. there's some of that stuff that is happening because right. they're just riding that edge. And so these type of conversations are important because when the leader gets better, the whole organization gets better. And I even here at TSM, Terry, she's mentioned before in her podcast, it was uh, several years ago, she's like, I needed personal, some financial um, instruction and wisdom for some things that they were dealing with just on a personal level. And so she sought out and yeah, she's reading Dave Ramsey and she's listening to audio books and podcasts. And through that, she was getting the financial wisdom she needed to make great choices that um, was a blessing financially in their life. And, but as she got better in that area, it carries over directly into the ministry. Because as we're having executive meetings, you start thinking, hey, why don't we start doing this a little different? Right. And it just changes the whole trajectory. So uh, that's what I love about these conversations, because as we're all getting better, our organizations are getting better. And for yes. us, we go so far. And once or twice a year with our whole staff, we have them go through uh, financial books and how to save, how to invest, how to prepare for retirement. And, you know, we got the 403B set up to help enable that because, you know, we want everybody to have that financial vision in their personal life and not just us at the, in the executive department or something but carry it over in the home. I love yeah. all of this so much. That, that, here's three scriptures that are always something I'm teaching our team and keeping in mind. And it's Proverbs 2019, where there is no vision, people perish, or we mm -hmm. cast off restraint. You know, we just don't know which direction we're going. Proverbs 2120, the wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. Yep. So that's biblical. You know, that's spiritual, <laughs> doing something unnatural to save. And then Proverbs 22, 3 from the Living Bible says, a prudent man foresees the difficulties ahead and prepares for them. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. And so that could be in any area of um, just leadership um, knowledge or seeing something ahead that, you know, if we continue down this path, I foresee there being danger, obstacles, problems. And so let's start making changes now, plan accordingly so that we don't just run right off the cliff. And you guys uh, are fans of Dr. Radke, Dr. Dean Radke. Yes, yes. We are as well. And uh, our FCF members right now have access to his ROI for God system for free. So- wow. I know it's huge. Um, yeah, we're in the middle of going through his whole training with everyone in our uh, on our team. Same. We we're going through it. Actually, this is now my fourth time, and I'm still learning. Yeah. And so some of them it's the first, some of them it's the second, but we're just we're going. You know, we're doing it. But that's what he talks about. You have to put everything on the table, face the facts of what's going on. We just talked about this with personal finances, and the same can be said with ministry. Yeah. It's hard sometimes when God has given you a vision and a clear direction for what you need to be doing. And you're the one that has to sit in the driver's side. You're the one that actually has to make those decisions, tough choices, what you have to be doing and be organized in the manner at what you do it in which you do it. And that can be so difficult. So I understand wanting to ignore some of the issues that may come up. But the more you ignore it, it's just like if you have an ailment in your body, yeah. the more you ignore it, the worse it becomes and can be, you know, the death of you. Yeah. And that's, I think we're sometimes, yeah, we, 
we say we're in faith because we're believing for something better, but really it's a little bit more of the ignoring the problem. <laughs> It's really fear. It's not so much faith because if it were faith, faith has action behind it. And if you're not doing anything, it's not faith. You're still just sitting stagnant in fear of I'm afraid to move. Yeah, I think very much so that can be the, the motive behind it. When you guys were setting up Terry's ministry and you were a part of that, like branching off onto your own. What was that? I mean, clearly God had given her a vision early on and you guys were sold. You guys were all in. There were what, like seven of you that left with her? Yeah, I think six. Okay. So, I mean, she had an awesome team ready to hit the ground running. What were those first meetings like where it was establishing the vision and translating it into everything that you did? Because I know that's a lengthy process. Yeah, it definitely is something that has grown and evolved. And then as we've grown, have levels of leaders and team members trying to um, reinvent how to do that even as we are growing. But And it's been interesting is just Terry sharing her heart and what she believes God is doing as a whole in the ministry and what God's speaking to her and now it's bigger than you think. And this is where you're going. This is the vision I'm giving you in just outreach. And so for us, it was like, God told her one time when she was asking for, I I think it was an extra million dollars or something. He's like, what, what do you need it for? And so that really made her pause and think, okay, what's the impact it's going to make. And so those Mm. are the conversations we were having because it wasn't just, again, for the sake of trying to grow and be bigger. It was God was redirecting, okay, how is this going to be used? And are you prepared for it so that when it does come, you can utilize it effectively? And one of the things that I started talking to the team with even back then is all these things we're praying for, and man, we're going to see double in this area and double it. I was like, if God brings that to us here over the next six weeks, are we prepared to walk in the vision that we believe he's given us? If not, wow. it goes back to, um, okay, no, we do need to hire someone else in this area because if we start getting, you know, 400 emails a day instead of 250, either we're going to offend a whole bunch of people or we're going to be prepared to minister to them. So that was kind of just some of the conversations and processes that we would go through initially. Okay. So what you just said just totally blew my mind because we're on that cusp right now of needing more employees because we're growing and, you know, not necessarily having enough finances to come in to cover the new employees. So we're on like this you know, there's a little gap there, but having just what you just said right there, talking about what impact would, so like, if this money were to come in, are we prepared for this new hire right now? And just filling that gap, you know, uh, Dr. Radke talks about coaching the gap. Uh, Michael Hyatt talks about, you know, in, uh, one of his books, he talks about filling, finding that gap and coaching that that's where faith intervenes like Mm -hmm. right there. That's where faith is filled with. You look at your reality and you prepare and then faith does the rest, right? Yeah. There will always be that element of, okay, Lord, (laughs) 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 let's go. And (laughs) right. And we, and it never changes. I mean, zeros keep getting added to it, but that sense of stepping out in that unknown never goes away. And that's a healthy thing. Um, going back to one of the conversations with Andrew Walmack and, and I hope as we're sharing this, this is not saying necessarily, Hey, everybody, you need to do this. Wisdom is being able to take information and know how to apply it to your situation. Exactly. And so, um, but Andrew Walmack said when he bought all that land that they're on right now and built his campuses and all, I believe it was, uh, $4 million to buy that land. And they had a million dollars saved up. And so they got a $3 million loan and put everything into it. He said, 
once we did that, we had the land and this um, loan to pay off. He goes, we had no reserves whatsoever. It was all or nothing, all the chips on the table and let's do it. And so there are those times that I believe when you know that God has spoken to you, then you step out, Um, but you don't do it trying to make something happen. Right. Yeah, that's so good. Sorry, my brain is just going back. Everything you said is we're in the middle of this big transition. I Okay, I'm going to edit this part out. We, this is the first year that we have grown more than we've lost. Wow, and thank we're you, getting Jesus. new applications almost every week. And we're at that point where it's like the quality of care is going to start going down if we don't yeah. have more office help you know, involved in this situation. I'm telling you this because of everything we went through with Echelon, but it took time to get there. You know, this wasn't like we did a year with you guys and then we had to hash out tough decisions here in the office with wise counsel. And if Miss Cookie, if something didn't sit right with Miss Cookie, she would call Dr. Radke or happy Caldwell and say, here's what I'm dealing with. I need advice. She would seek out that wise counsel. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, what month is it? It's August. Okay. So it has been (laughs) the craziest (laughs) year and a half. Obviously we started this right before the pandemic. Um, but the craziest year and a half Cassidy warned us that it would take us this long before we would start to see results. And we're still not even seeing that great of results. We're just excited that we're seeing results. Yes. The progress. Yeah. It, it like anything is better than nothing. Yeah. And here we are. So everything you're saying, it's like, it's just going in my head and, and recirculating. I'm going to remember this and talk to Ms. Cookie about some of it because we are right on that border of needing more help. And are we prepared? What exactly would that next position look like? We need to write that out and come up with a budget of what their salary should be so that we could be in. This is why vision is so important. So you can have a specific number and a specific job title or job responsibilities that you can give this person. It's not just that you want more money to come in. It's that you need better care for the people that you're caring for. Yeah. And I think having vision and a financial vision, it's the difference between being reactive and proactively creating That's so where good. you're going. And so, so you don't want to just live life personally or organizationally, just being reactive. Yes. Um, you want to set the course and uh, just start breaking through the ice as hard as it may be and just keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. And so that's, I think that's one, that is one of the key features of having that vision is um, being able to make that change. Oh man, that's good. Okay. What else do you have on your list? You said you had some things pointed out. Oh, um, have we talked about see. everything? Yeah, I think it was just um, some of those examples, probably track things and being specific in that, you know, um, having just add this and I'll add something and you kind of go off, uh, maybe some inspiration will spark here Mm -hmm. and then we can go to your top three things. A lot of times when churches or ministries start, there's not a team behind them and it is just one person. So I would love to know, like how Terry built the team that you guys have. In the beginning, she was working for another ministry. Nothing was hidden from her father that she was working with. Everything was very much out in the open and she was clear with her dad on what God had spoken to her. But I would like to know how you guys got pulled into it. What was it that she said? Did she come specifically to you? Well, I think for me specifically, 
I was working with her since 2001, July of 2001. So um, that was 20 years last month. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, so I had been working with her seven years. And as God kind of was pulling on her heart to minister more, and then as her position elevated to CEO of Jerry Savelle Foy, Jerry Savelle, Jerry Savelle <laughs> Ministries, um, and he was, her dad was asking her to minister more on the TV broadcast with him and stuff. So just that ministry side of what God was calling her to was just coming up more and more. Mm -hmm. And so being with her every stage of that and working with her on a daily basis, I, I you just kind of have that, uh, just that connection, but also it's just, it is that relationship side of working together. And so for me, it was, it's a big part. It's just the relationship mm -hmm. in addition to feeling God's call on my life to fulfill my purpose by helping her fulfill her purpose essentially. So I, and I understand not everybody's going to be that way and that's okay. But um, so I would say for the initial team and everybody that moved out here is still here except for our CFO's wife, she kind of retired. Um, we're still all here connected and it really is the relationship. And I think any ministry uh, church, when you're getting started, those first few people that connect with you and help to move forward to accomplish the vision, you can't pay enough to replace that. Yeah because you you can never have that again. And I understand not everybody who starts with you can finish with you. Um, I, I completely understand that because as you're growing, someone's job, <laughs> what they started with, they get a new job every six months <laughs> and not everybody can keep switching jobs that often just inside the same ministry. Um, and so I understand that. And not everybody who starts with you can stay with you or move up with as was as the growth of the ministry takes place. Um, but since we have that core, and I think, you know, if you're just starting out, yeah, you have to do it all. And even as, you know, Dean Radke says, you have to get away from that as soon as possible. But finance, finances is usually the gap between <laughs> wanting to and being able to. Mm -hmm. um, and just on a basic level, be it a business, a ministry organization, you have to supply something for which there is a demand for. And that's where growth takes place. Mm -hmm. And if you're supplying something that you think's awesome, be it your style of ministry or whatever, or your widget you're selling, but there's not a demand for it, um, it's it's almost impossible to grow from there. So that's one thing, just being honest with ourselves as we're getting started. Like, are you seeing fruit from your work? And again, that does have to get married with God's word to you. Cause you know, if God said, you know, you will do this and results and success ultimately come down to obedience, <laughs> not, not numbers, you know, and we have to decide yeah. that very early on. That yes. my success is dependent on me obeying God, not what the numbers are saying. And oh, so, so good. That's important. But if you know God's spoke to your heart and said, No, I want you to reach a hundred thousand people in Uganda. Okay, well, numbers and success do equal obeying God and fulfilling that purpose. So there is a lot of crossover there too. Um, but yeah, and so as, as you're seeing fruit from it. That should give you a sense of, okay, God is blessing us. You want to push the boulder down the hill, not up the hill. So when you see that there's momentum in what you're doing and there's a demand for what you're offering ministry-wise and you're able to communicate in a bigger picture your vision, that's what draws people to you. You know, even because my relationship with Terry working at JSMI, if she communicated her vision of, man, I just want to go around and rent the smallest ballrooms in the littlest cities 
to get together 20 or 30 women to have a conference and just, you know, that vision is not compelling to me. Like I'm going to, my life is going behind that to make that happen. And so it is your ability to have an overall vision of what God's given you and to communicate that again, in that we've got to do this in a passionate way that people are like, yeah, I can get behind that be it partners, be it staff, be it volunteers. And um, I think that's a big place where that starts. If you don't have a vision beyond doing what you're doing now, God doesn't need to send you people to uh, fulfill that. Well, that's all you get on today's episode. But if you want to hear more, make sure you register for our quarter three event, Ministry and Money. It, the link to register will be in the description below. This is your very last chance to register before it goes live. You can register after the fact, but if you want to be a part of the live and ask questions, uh, you need to do that today because it's launching August 25th. Okay. It, this has been such an eye-opening journey for me. I hope it has changed your life as much it, as it has mine. And I look forward to seeing you on our next episode of the FCF Leadership Podcast. Mm -hmm.